Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope you're having a great day and we're all doing well. So it seems like a lot of you really enjoyed my video where I showed off one mistake for every defender in Rainbow Six Siege. So in this video, I'm going to be showing off one mistake for every attacker. The support in the last video was absolutely amazing. So I just want to quickly say if you do go on to enjoy, be sure to drop this video a like, sub to the channel since we're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year, and maybe consider dropping a comment since it does help with the algorithm and it allows me to make more videos like this. As well as this, consider checking out my Twitch. I frequently stream over there and who knows, maybe one day I can get a charm. And without further ado, let's get into this and we're gonna be starting from the newest operators and making our way along so first up we have brava and a big mistake a lot of brava players will do is they'll not understand the range of her gadget when you initially start to hack a gadget you need to stay in range of that gadget or else the hack will fail and you'll have to do it again you won't lose one of your hacks but you just have to go through that process again and the longer you take to hack a gadget the more likely it is a defender is going to see you and destroy your drone that is why if you are planning on hacking a camera for example i recommend you hack default cameras that is the best thing you can hack as brava since it is the safest and it gives a lot of intel then you have to make sure that your drone is in a safe position since the hack isn't the quickest thing ever and you do need to stay in range so just make sure when you are going for hacks you are staying in range and keep in mind that you can do this through floors as well since the sort of invisible range of where these hacks take place is sort of like a big bubble meaning that you can also do it from above and below brava is actually an incredible operator and a lot of people have kind of disregarded her since her hacks do take quite a long time but when defenders do have a lot of utility she is a force to be reckoned with and she also packs a punch. Next up we have Grim and Grim is one of the most interesting operators in the game because he went from completely useless to now in his current state is you know pretty good and he is still going to be getting another rework in season 4. I believe that they're maybe going to make his gadget an underbarrel like a uh, nomad. Grim is sort of like the trust the process operator just a few more tweaks and he'll be amazing. The big addition he got to his loadout was the fact that he now has the bailiff secondary. The bailiff for an operator such as Grim is actually pretty massive and a big mistake I see a lot of people doing is they're just not using using this bailiff to the advantage. Currently, one of the biggest issues with Grim is the fact that he has to face check a lot of angles to deploy his gadget. That means you can be taken off guard, and since you've got your gadget in your hand, you can't shoot back. Well, that is where the bailiff can come in handy, and you can start making holes in floors, you can go through floors and walls at the same time, and you can start to deploy his canisters in a lot of positions where it would be quite dangerous to peek otherwise, and when you're doing this alongside a teammate which is pushing that position, it can lead to some really interesting and unique plays, and it just makes playing Grim a bit safer. Who knows, maybe his next change in Season 4 will give him the option to deploy through walls, and you won't even need to use the Bailiff anymore. But as it currently stands, use the Bailiff on Grim and try and make some interesting plays like this. Next up, we have Sense, and again, Sense is another operator which is kind of falling flat right now. I don't think they're completely useless, and a lot of people see them as like an operator that shouldn't be in this game. I think they have a place in this game. I think they need a few more tweaks, and I'm going to make a video about that soon. But in their current state, they are still usable, and a big mistake I'll see a lot of people do with Sense is they'll just throw their gadget directly in the middle of the doorway. This leads to some awkward angles, you're blinding yourself when you walk in the doorway, and you're not really properly cutting off the enemies. That is what Sense is good at. They have basically an advanced smoke grenade, and you should use that to cut off angles. Start using the environment around you, such as holes in the wall, and specifically drone holes, to get some really interesting plays. One of the best Sense plays on Theme Park is when attacking Throne and Armory. If you come to Bottom Dragon and you throw your gadget through the drone hole, you perfectly cut off the Armory angle, which is the double door, and as well as this any footholds which is on the walls beside it that's very common to see on the wall leading into dragon so if you as a team have the maintenance breach open you have a clear line of sight to plant behind the throne someone stays in dragon just in case someone runs through the wall and then you have a teammate holding split this makes getting a plant down in this location so much safer so as your local osa main there's something i'm going to tell you about this operator which you may have not realized and it's a mistake i see a lot of people making to this day and simply if you're crouched when you place your shield the moment that animation is finished and the shield is placed you will remain in the crouch position position and be safe behind the shield. However, if you're in the standing position and you place Osa's shield, the moment that animation is finished and the shield is placed, it will put you back in the standing position. This is actually pretty massive and if you've been placing shields while standing, you've been making a mistake. The amount of times I've taken out Osa simply because I started to pre-fire the top of the shield, knowing that the moment that shield is placed, she'll be forced into the standing position and she'll have no time to react and I'll get an instant headshot. Every time you place your shield as Osa, do it whilst you're crouched, so the moment that shield gets placed you'll be behind the cover so if you didn't know this before watching this video then drop a comment and make sure to never make this mistake again next up we have flores and it seems like a lot of people seem to understand how to use flores effectively but something i don't see many people do is use the fact that flores can open up soft walls and what makes this useful for him is the fact that he can do it from safety one thing flores is really good at exploiting is footholds and head levels those are holes in soft walls which defenders don't necessarily want to make a rotate hole but they want to have a line of sight so they'll shoot 
to open with a shotgun or a bailiff, for example. This is when you can kind of just mess up the plans of the defenders, sneak a Flores drone in, and open up a soft wall, which they only want to have head holes in. A good example of this is Top Floor Bank. It's very common to see the left side wall when you enter Top Square have head holes on it. Well, if you can just sneak a Flores drone in, you've just given yourself an entry point into the bomb site. So stop underestimating Flores's potential of being a soft preacher, since in the example given, that head hole will have a player watching anyone pushing Top Square, so it's going to be hard to bring in Ash and Sophia without getting shot. Flores can do it from safety, and he can open up those walls. Next up, we have Zero, aka Sam Fisher. And a big mistake I'll see a lot of people doing with Sam is the same thing which I said in my Defender video for Valkyrie. They'll pretty much just place his cameras in very default locations, and they'll get picked quite easily. You can start to exploit the map's environment and basically think outside the box. For example, here are two very simple, fast, easy cameras on border, which give you a lot of intel. Heading to the roof, you can shoot a camera to watch waiting room. As well as this, this will also show East Balcony, as well as Office Hallway. And then shooting one in the open skylight in Office itself, you can see anyone pushing Fountain, as well as Office Double Door. You can also see if anyone is hiding in the corner by the triple wall, which I know is quite a big choke point for anyone who is pushing the double door. Even though there's been five attackers since Sam came out, I still feel like there's so much untouched potential with him, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. Next up, we have Ace, one of the best attackers in the game. And I like to say that I'm a good Ace player, but I even make this mistake myself. One of the biggest counters to Ace is impact grenades. Heck, a lot of the time when someone's acing my wall, I'll get an impact grenade ready, and the moment that first hole is made, I'll impact it, meaning that the second one won't be made. The reason why it's smart to do this is because that hole is not big enough to enter, and although attackers can still see through it, that's still not an entry point. So with that in mind, a mistake you can make is placing multiple Selmas beside each other on the same wall, because the moment one of those holes open, an impact grenade will come through and it'll destroy both of them. Of course, this depends on the round itself, and you can do this sometimes and it will be viable, but just keep in the back of your mind that that potentially can be impacted, and maybe wait for the first one to detonate before you throw the second one. The biggest mistake I see every Ayana player making is the fact they just won't use their hologram. People seem to forget that Ayana is a human drone. So many times I've seen Ayanas in 1v1 situations and they'll just face check every angle and get slammed. Drone out the enemy, you have unlimited drones. There's a reason she is one of the most picked attackers. Yes, it's because she has a strong loadout and grenades, but it's also the fact that her gadget is unlimited drones for the attacking team as long as she is alive. In a game which is all about intel, that is massive. It's just gone a bit unfortunate that a lot of Ayana players have fallen into the role of swing everything and don't really think of consequences, when in reality, Ayana is a recon operator. So be sure to use your gadget because not only are you letting yourself down, you're also letting your team down. Next up we have Kali, and to me, Kali is just a sad operator. She came into the game when Thatcher was at his strongest, and even to this day, he is still the most banned attacker. Even with secondary impact EMPs now a thing, Kali is still the main alternative to Thatcher. And Kali has an amazing gadget, I absolutely love it, it's extremely useful at clearing utility, but the massive bummer to it is the fact that her primary weapon is a sniper. I cannot emphasize how sad I am that the main alternative to Thatcher has a sniper. If Kali had a normal AR, she would be a staple of every single lineup and would be one of the best. Her secondaries are good, but unfortunately that sniper is the elephant in the room. So a big mistake I see a lot of Kali players doing is they let the sniper hold them back. A lot of times you'll see Kali players basically just sitting outside on like the sniper's nest for example, hoping to try and get a kill on a window. Unfortunately, that's just not this game. You have to get into the building. You have to take those close range gunfights. Defenders have the gift of time. Time is on their side. Attackers are the ones who have to enter and get a plant down or at least eliminate the defenders. With Kali having such a useful gadget, you have to be helping with your teammates. And unfortunately, you do have to take close range gunfights. A big mistake I see a lot of Amaru players doing is they're not utilizing the fact that she can fly up hatches. It's very predictable for an Amaru player to fly in certain windows. And a lot of the time, windows will have traps on them. There'll be razor blooms be frost mats. But when it comes to hatches, no one really places anything on hatches. Other than hatches being reinforced, if you're a Maru and you're going to fly up a soft hatch, a lot of the time there's not going to be a frost mat wait in there, there's not going to be a Fenrir trap. Yes, you may hit them as you start to leave the area of the hatch, but for the most part, hatches are pretty safe to climb. I don't think a lot of the Maru players realize how strong she can be when you coordinate with a teammate and pinch someone out and take that enemy by surprise by flying up the hatch. A big mistake you're going to see a lot of Nook players doing now is the fact that they still think that Nook is silent. Nook has now been nerfed, meaning that her footsteps still make as much noise as any other operator. Although Nook now does make more noise with her footsteps, she is still invisible to cameras, so just be aware that you're not going to be able to silent step yourself into sight anymore. You are still going to be taking those defenders who are on cameras by surprise, but anyone who is waiting for you around the corner will most likely hear you coming. So you're probably going to just have to adjust your playstyle for Nook a tiny bit more. A big mistake I see a lot of people do with Gridlock is kind of similar to Grim. They're not utilizing the very useful secondary, in this case the Super Shorty, to make holes 
to install floors on walls, which you can then throw your track stingers in. This can be very good for post plant situations, or if you're pinching out a defender, making these angles to throw traps through can help slow down their rotate. This can allow you to think outside the box a lot more and just be even better with gridlock, an operator I already believe is severely underrated. Now, a mistake I see a lot of Nomad players doing is that they don't really conserve their gadget very well. If you do really need to use air jabs on runouts and flank rotations, then use them. I'm not saying you shouldn't use her gadget, sometimes there will just be situations where it maybe make more sense for your teammate to throw down a claymore, and then you can hold on to one air jab, and then in a post plant situation, you can cover the diffuser. Air jabs are sort of like a less lethal but more versatile claymore, so if it's a position where a claymore can cover it just as good, then use a claymore. Next up we have Maverick, and a big mistake I see a lot of people doing with Maverick is that they just don't make holes in the wall anymore. A lot of people have sort of forgotten how to play Maverick like a rat. Yes, they'll maybe make the hole at the bottom to get rid of utility, or they'll do a Maverick trick, but they won't make those small singular holes and take the defenders by surprise. I've started to do this more recently because people just don't do it anymore. I like to do it at the very top of reinforcements because then you've got that little lip at the top of reinforcement which covers your hole even more. And I'll be honest, as a defender, I cannot tell you the last time someone has made a single Maverick hole against me, rather they've just done like a line at the top or bottom, or just to assist another hard breacher. I just think a lot of people have forgotten that Maverick can be used as a stealthy operator, and you can get some really interesting picks on defenders from holes which they didn't even know existed. Next up we have Lion, and a big mistake a lot of Lion players will do is that they'll pop a scan in a situation where a scan won't really be useful. Lion is only useful when you have to give the defenders a reason to move. If none of your teammates or yourself are pressuring a defender, then what is the point in popping a Lion scan? If your teammate is clearing out a room, they know there's a defender in there somewhere, they're throwing flashbangs, maybe they're getting jackal tracked, and this defender keeps repositioning, then that is a perfect time to use a lion scan. But if you're applying no pressure to the defending team, then they're not really going to care about a lion scan. They're going to stand still for a few seconds and get on with what they're doing. So lion is an amazing operator. He used to be extremely busted. But if you're not going to give the defenders a reason to move, then what's the point in using them? Next up, we have Finca, and a big mistake I see a lot of Finca players doing is that they just won't use her gadget when you or your teammates are caught in an effect. And what I mean by this is, if you hit a concussion mine or echo disorientates you, a Finca boost will completely remove this effect. This is also going to count for the frost rework which is coming next season, where Finca will completely remove the effect you get when you pull yourself out for frost map. So anytime you or your teammate is suffering an effect, pop a Finca boost and it will cancel it out. The only time you shouldn't do this is if you're in a smoke canister, since the adrenaline makes your heart beat faster, therefore you're breathing in more, and this actually makes you die quicker in the smoke. Next up we have Dokubi, and one of the biggest changes Dokubi got recently was the fact that dead defenders on cameras will also be knocked off the cams. This is a massive change because before it was only the defenders who were alive that would get knocked off cameras and dead defenders could still sit on cameras and give intel. So now that she knocks everyone on the defending team off including dead defenders, that means if your teammate is going for a plan you should do one of these calls. Since dead defenders can't turn their phone off because they're dead, they have to wait the entire duration and that means only the alive defenders after they've switched their phones off can then go on cameras. By this time you've had the plant down and that means you are basically avoiding evil eyes, yokai, valkyries cameras, bulletproof cameras. When attackers go for a plant, a dead defender on the camera can be game changing and basically stop that plant altogether. And with Dokubi being able to knock them off that camera for a period of time, that's absolutely massive. So don't waste your calls early in the round unless they are absolutely necessary. Next up we have Zofia and a big mistake I see a lot of Zofia players doing is they just won't use their concussion grenades. Not only are concussion grenades good for, well, concussing defenders, it's also also good at giving away their position. You can use her concussion grenades to clear a room without even droning it. Basically, if you shoot a concussion grenade into a room and it doesn't detonate instantly, rather it has the long string out, then it detonates, that means no one is in that room. However, if you shoot it in a room and it instantly activates, that means there is a defender in that room, and as well as this, they will be concussed. Zofia's concussions are actually a very useful part of her utility, and I feel like so many people just only use her for the breaching capability. Next up we have Ying, and a massive mistake I see so many Ying players make, it's so infuriating, is the fact that they'll throw half of their utility or even all of their candelas in a room, blind the defenders, and they just won't push. And I see this all the time, and I don't know if it's because people are scared that maybe they didn't flash them, maybe the defender managed to dodge it, and they're going to jump in and die, but you might as well try. What is the point in bringing Ying if you're not even going to push when you blind an enemy? Yeah, you may startle the enemy for a little bit, but when that enemy comes to and realizes that no one is pushing them, they're just going to be like, oh, well, okay. Once you've thrown those candelas in and you've flashed many of the different corners, push and try and confirm your kill. Ying isn't an operator where you sit outside holding an angle, acting scared the whole time. Don't play Ying if you're not going to 
play aggressive. Next up, we have Jackal. And a mistake I see a lot of Jackal players doing is they won't understand how the footprints work. If the footprints are red, that means that there is a defender very close to you and they might even be beside you. If the footprints are green, that doesn't mean the defender isn't beside you, but that means those footprints are old. So the likelihood is that the defender is far away now. But if the footprints are green, that means they are old footsteps. But if they're red, that means they are very fresh and the defender hasn't gotten very far. So let's say you're seeing two sets of footsteps. Both are from two different defenders. You should always prioritize the red one. And as well as this, there is a gradient change from green to red. So there is some colors in between. But if there's an option between green and another color, such as red, always scan the red one because that means that defender is close to you and you want to get their position revealed quickly. So just keep that in mind next time you play Jackal. If you see red footprints, then the defender is most likely very close. Next up, we have Habana, and a big mistake I'll see a lot of Habana players doing is that they won't grab the hatches from safety. Habana is the hard breacher with the furthest range. She can do a lot of stuff from safety. Yet, for example, on Clubhouse, when you're attacking bottom floor, you'll see a Habana walk into kitchen and try and grab the hatch. There, she will be nitroceled from a Valk camera, or maybe a pulse will be below, or a solace and you're just putting yourself in danger for no reason. On sites such as this, you can just go on vertical repel on the kitchen window and grab the hatch from outside. You do still need someone to watch stock, but this is much safer, and a lot of Habana players will just put themselves in danger for absolutely no reason. You have range, use that. Next up we have Capital, and a big mistake I see a lot of Capital players doing is the fact that they don't realize that you can easily shoot his bolts through bullet holes. This means you can lead to some very interesting plays and do it from some very safe positions. I was playing around with this on Chalet, and I found some nice little things. For example, just an easy way you can just flame off the breach in case Bandit is tricking it. And as well as this, if one of your teammates want to go for a plant on K9 door, you can just run into the kitchen, make a hole in the floor above you, shoot the smoke through, and you have a perfect smoke screen to go for a plant. Use this knowledge that you can shoot Capital's bolts through bullet holes to your advantage, and you can get some really interesting plays. Because as well as this, you're going to take the defenders off guard. They're not going to expect this, and a lot of the time you'll be able to dodge one my magnets as well. Next up, we have Blackbeard, and a big mistake I'll see a lot of people doing with Blackbeard is they just won't know what to do with themselves. Coordinate with your teammate. Blackbeard has EMP secondaries. You can be very helpful with your team. Basically, if you want to work with a Thermite, Thermite can grab the breach whilst you EMP the bandits off or a mute jammer. The wall gets opened and you can sit on repel by the breach and hold this angle whilst Thermite goes somewhere else. I agree that Blackbeard is in a weird state. I think he always will be unless he gets a major change. But just have the confidence to take the angles since you are going to be able to block a few shots. And do use the EMPs and work as a support player. Next up we have Buck and the biggest mistake you can do with Buck right now is just not bringing the correct loadout. At this current point in time, Buck has the capability of being the soft breacher, the hard breacher, as well as clearing utility with the Gon 6. At this current point in time, you shouldn't be using anything else on Buck. If you want to use the DMR, that's fine because you still have the breaching capability with that, but you should 100% be running the Gon 6 and the secondary hard breach. Currently, Buck is a jack of all trades, and if you're not bringing that stuff, then you're just limiting the amount of stuff he can do. Buck is phenomenal right now, so don't put yourself at a disadvantage when he can do all of this stuff. Now, a massive mistake sledge players do is they simply won't play vertical. A lot of players who aren't the best will just comfort pick sledge for his weapon since the L8 has no recoil and it is a strong weapon and then they won't play vertical. I understand if you're not the best player in the game and you are comfort picking that weapon, but if someone on your team can play vertical very well and you're not letting them get sledge, then you're really not doing your team a favor. Vertical play is one of the biggest skill gaps in this game and if you're trying to get out of the low ranks, you're really going to take your enemies by surprise if you can do this successfully. So if you're one of those players who comfort picks sledge for his weapon, try playing vertical. He's very useful. Next up we have Thatcher and a big mistake a lot of Thatcher players will do is they'll just waste all of his EMPs on a single breach. And his EMPs could be used later in the round when you're going for a site execute to disable evil eyes, Valkyrie's cameras, Echo's drones, any of the traps. Thatcher disables so much stuff. And yes, he is traditionally used for opening up walls alongside a Thermite or an Ace. And you should use your EMPs for that, but try and save some for later in the round when you're going to take Sight. Because in the current meta of the game, the chances are you're going to walk in Sight and you're going to hit a Fenrir gadget along with a Bulletproof camera on you, as well as a Valkyrie camera on you, and other stuff on top of that. So you are going to want to keep those EMPs handy. Next up, we have Ash. And the biggest mistake you can do with Ash is simply rushing in and not using your gadget. Ash is one of the most simple operators in the game, yet she is very useful. Her gadget is very useful and not 
only clearing utility but opening walls as well. When you do an Ash Rush and die early, you're wasting a very useful attacker who has a lot of utility. Use her correctly because you're going to help the team so much. A big mistake I'll see a lot of Thermite players doing is they'll just take too long to place their gadget on the wall. For example, if there's a Mute Jammer on the wall and you know there isn't a Cade or Bandit, then just place your gadget on the wall even if it gets muted. That means the moment that gadget gets cleared, you can instantly detonate the breach. This saves a lot of time and it will take the enemies by surprise. Same case if there's a Bandit or a Kaid on the wall who are also playing active. If you're coordinating with your teammates, start placing the breach on the wall as the wall is electrified and time it so the moment the EMP goes off, your gadget will then be placed because obviously it doesn't destroy the gadget whilst you're still in the placing animation, only when it has been placed. And a lot of high level Thermite players will do this, they'll just suck up the damage you get from the electricity for a few seconds, coordinate with their teammates so the moment that EMP disables the gadget, the breach is already on the wall and they detonate it, and the bandit or Kaid has less time to react. A big mistake you can do with Montagna is that you just won't call out. Quite similar in a sense to Ayana, Monty is a human drone. He is going to be that first person pushing in, giving all the intel to the attackers behind him. Tell them where traps are, where the defenders are playing, if there's any gadgets or shields in front of those defenders. You're going to be using your entire shield to block the bullets, as well as this, so you're going to be relaying that information to your team behind you. If you're playing solo queue and you pick Monty and don't even turn your mic on, then don't be surprised when you get slammed and don't start blaming your teammates for not protecting you. I feel like so many people just don't understand how to play support in this game and Monty is a massive part of that. Next up we have Twitch and a big mistake a lot of Twitch players can do is simply not using their drones correctly. For example, if you suspect that someone is playing in a room, don't use one of your shock drones, just throw one of your default cameras. You have two default cameras and then you've also got two shock drones. Use them correctly. If you're going to go clear utility, use a shock drone. If you're going to drone out someone, use a default drone. If you don't have any default drones left and you do really need to drone someone out, then yeah, use the shock drone. But if you have all your utility at your disposal, then use them correctly. Next up, we have Blitz. And honestly, this is a big mistake a lot of people do, but it's not really their fault. It's just the fact that you try and rely on a lot of the mechanics Blitz has. So you'll try and rely on the fact that he can block bullets or that you're going to get a successful melee or your ADS speed, for example. I'm going to be honest, shield mechanics in this game simply suck. They're very inconsistent and not really reliable in my opinion. And that is why shields are getting a rework in season four where they're completely reworking the mechanics. And that is something we're going to learn more about in the future. So although this isn't necessarily the fault of you as a player, I just wouldn't really rely on a lot of these mechanics to be reliable since there's been so many times where I've played Blitz, ran up to melee someone and they somehow melee me first. A big mistake IQ players can do is quite similar to Monty and that's the fact that they're not calling out to their team. With operators such as Solace and Warden having a high pick rate, as well as operators such as Pulse, IQ can give away their live position when they are using their gadgets. Same with Vigil as well, when he activates his gadget, he shows up on IQ's scanner. So when one of those operators are on the board and they'll be using their gadgets quite frequently, Go IQ and relay that information to your team. There's been times when I've been able to tell them exactly where a pulse is because I've been scanning them as IQ. IQ can also ping their gadgets, so you can give a precise ping without that defender even knowing. Next up, we have Fuse, and this one is quite similar to Habana, but for Fuse, you don't actually have to step in the room to fuse the floor below you. Rather, if you just do it on one of the outside barricades, those cluster chargers will make their way through the floorboards into the bomb site below. This means you can still cluster charge directly into the bomb site, but you're keeping yourself in safety. We don't have to worry about Solace, Pulse, or any other Nitro Cell operators, and you can just start bombarding the bomb site from safety. Even if you don't kill anyone in the bomb site, you will still be clearing Kiba barriers, deployable shields, bulletproof cameras. A lot of people seem to think Fuse is bad because they don't get killed with him, but he's insanely good at clearing utility. And finally, I'd say a massive mistake players use with Glass is they just rely on the smoke grenade too much. Glass has an extremely strong DMR. It's not a sniper, it's a DMR. He has a heat seeking scope which will instantly highlight enemies, meaning he's a great fragger. And as well as this, he has the option of frag grenades, and he's only one of the four attackers who has that option, and he also has the gun six. I get comments all the time when I'm playing Glass, and people tell me why am I not running the smoke grenades. And my answer simply is, I just don't like that playstyle on Glass, and I don't think that fits him right now. Yes, it can be useful, and there is a trick right now with Maverick and Glass, where you smoke off the breach, Maverick makes holes, and Glass shoots through the smoke. It's very effective, and it's very strong. But other than that strat, I would rather just have grenades and a gun 6 in my pocket to clear utility and kill defenders, than attempt to throw a smoke grenade down randomly in the hallway and get slammed by a warden, who, might I add, is the most played defender right now. So, when I look at my options, I've got Glass using the DMR, which is very strong, I I can also bring the gun 6 to clear utility and I can also bring grenades to clear utility and kill defenders. Or I could bring smoke grenades and be instantly countered by the most played defender at the current point in time. I get a lot more usage out of the first option and at this current point in time I recommend you change it up with glass as well. 
And so everyone, that was one mistake with every single attacker in Rainbow Six Siege as of Operation Dread Factor. We have the reveal of the new season coming quite soon and there should be a new attacker coming that season if the pattern is correct. So I wonder how impactful they will be to the game and let's see if people make common mistakes with them as well. So be sure to check out my other video where I do one common mistake for every defender. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, dislike it if you did not. Subscribe if you are new. I shall catch you all later. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.